Hi, welcome to Getting Started with Cockroach TV. I'm Will Cross. And I'm Lauren Hirata. We'll be your instructors for this course. I'm the director of training here at Cockroach Labs in New York, where I'm building a team of trainers and content developers for both online and in-person training. And I'm a senior technical writer and have spent the last couple of years working with the rest of the docs team in building out our extensive product documentation. I also help with onboarding new Cockroach Labs employees, so I'm really excited to be helping you get started with CockroachDB. Let's begin by talking a little bit about the company and how it got started. Cockroach Labs, the company that makes CockroachDB, was founded in New York in 2015 by Ben Darnell, Spencer Kimball, and Peter Mattis, three engineers with a vision. They wanted to create an open source version of Spanner, a distributed SQL database. The name was chosen because cockroaches are a resilient species. They survived the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. We intend for your data to be just as resilient. Let's go over the course structure. In the first chapter, Overview and First Steps, we'll talk a bit about database history and where the CockroachDB project fits in. We'll go over the unique combination of features that brings people to it and how those features work together to make data easy for developers and administrators. We'll spin up a single node cluster and talk about the primary key in CockroachDB, which we'll need to be mindful of when creating a table. In Chapter 2, Cluster Basics, we'll go over some features that are present in every CockroachDB cluster. We'll see how to start a set of nodes on a single laptop and initialize our cluster, then add nodes to it. We'll talk about an important concept called the key space and go deep on its relationship to scalability, availability, and resilience. We'll take a look at the admin UI, using it to do things like identify when a node goes down. And finally, we'll introduce secondary indexes, which are used to improve query performance. In Chapter 3, SQL at Scale, we'll begin to get a sense of the capabilities of CockroachDB in a distributed environment. We'll perform transactions, for example, and see the isolation guarantees in action. We'll also start to use CockroachDB's location awareness features. At the end, you'll find a graded final exam, and we'll wrap things up by spending a little time going over what we've done and also what other topics you might explore outside the course. Each chapter is broken down into several lesson videos, most of which have an ungraded multiple choice quiz afterwards. You can take these as many times as you like. Along the way, there will be several ungraded labs for you to do as well. Even though they're typically placed right after a demonstration, doing something yourself can feel very different than seeing it done, and I encourage you to use these opportunities to reinforce your new skills. If you have questions along the way, or you want to discuss something with your fellow students, head to the Slack channel for a discussion. At the end, your grade in this course is determined entirely by the final exam. If your exam average is 70% or more, you pass the course and will issue you a certificate of completion. And with that, enjoy getting started with CockroachDB.